acceptable treatment for this unfortunate disease that had been grappling with me for seven years now. Although I couldn't raise as much money as possible to cover my medical bills, I was able to gather a little money from the proceeds of my craft and the shoe making to visit various hospitals, notably RVTH for treatment. His story is sympathetic. Ibrahim Akonte of Ndungu Kebe used to be a strong and agile man, now owing to a debilitating health condition. This 41-year-old man is desperate. He wants society to help him overcome his elephantiasis. For seven years, Conte told Weekend Spectrum that he has been running from pillar to post seeking assistance, but his efforts were futile. For this reason, Conte said he decided to contact the media for attention, something he hoped will turn in his favor. Conte recounted some of his challenges he faced in a bid to get treatment. Unfortunately, I couldn't go for the subsequent rendezvous because I fell short of funds to cover up for my appointments. Imagine I traveled from my village to Banjul to see the doctor, given my profession. Besides, I was married earlier with an 11-year-old boy, but my wife later divorced me because she couldn't bear my conditions. About his family commitments, Quante explained further. My relatives deserted me as well. Therefore, I need a Samaritan to sponsor my treatment, possibly a surgery so that I can regain my normal state of being because I would not want to be an amputee. After going through a turbulent political period leading to independence, India and Pakistan were supposed to be the same country. However, on August 14, 1947, Pakistan won its independence from Great Britain. And the following day, its neighbors, India, also decided that it has gained its freedom. Our reporter Ibrahim Abalde has been looking at the significance of India's independence and the legacy of its founding father, Mahatma Gandhi. Ripu Daman Malik, on a business trip to the Gambia with his colleagues, said his country's independence celebrations offers him the chance to reflect on his country's potentials and what the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, bequeathed to India. Speaking at our studios, the media executive was quite emotional about Gandhi philosophy and the place India has occupied in the Committee of Nations. Yes, he is truly a father of the nation because uh, see, when it all started in 1857, right? Our struggle of independence started in 1857, but then under the ages of, Mah um, uh, we would say, Mahatma Gandhi, this revolution took a new turn. and. Moreover, the entire revolution was based on non-violence. You know, this is something very unique. This is something which, which has imbibed a new quality in us. That's what makes India a flexible, adaptable, adoptable state. That's why we don't feel any problems in taking up new challenges, taking up new cultures, in getting culminated with them. You come to India, you will find so many African students studying now. You come to India, you will find people from different walks of the globe. Reason being, we are very open to it, even with our immediate neighbors, Pakistan. We are the 65th Independence Day of India, and we are right now in Gambia. But uh, you can see there are a lot of Indians in the Gambia as well, and the, the people here are very cooperative. And uh, uh, so, I don't feel any difference to celebrate whether it is it we are in India or we are in the Gambia. I think India and Pakistan have a lot in common. In fact, the two countries were the same until they were partitioned during colonialism. Malik said rivalry may be there, however, India respects its neighbors and that his country has over the years embraced a popular development concept called adaptable and adoptable. The festivals together. So this entire thing is more of political nature or military nature, but then as, in, as the new youth is taking up the uh, governance and uh, they are realizing that war or any sort of rivalry cannot help any country. So uh, recently, I'll give you an example, uh, Pakistan was devastated by floods two years ago. So India offered the aid and same is the case we expect from them as well. So not a problem. It's okay.
Okay. I mean, finally now, as you celebrate... There is no doubt that India is a rainbow nation with a staggering population of 1.2 billion people. The country is increasingly attracting a lot of investors. Malik is happy that African students are making best use of the educational opportunities offered to them in India. The 65th Independence Day of India, and we are right now in Gambia. But uh, you can see there are a lot of Indians in the Gambia as well, and the, the people here are very cooperative and uh, uh, so I don't feel any difference to celebrate whether it is it we are in India or we are in the Gambia I think so what does the future holds for young Indians many of them still undecided about what role to play in the country's march towards economic prosperity yes well I believe as an Indian and as an as a third party perspective if I want to give it to you India has a wonderful, wonderful future ahead because our youth is uh, very, very uh, vibrant. Our youth is very proactive. They are doing wonders in all st verticals. I can give you an example of my organization. My organization is just 10 year old. But what we have achieved in Africa as, uh, and th in terms of technology transfer, industrial innovations, education initiatives, skill development initiatives, we've been doing wonders. So if I believe in the next 20 years or so, we look ourselves as a, another superpower because we are not only concentrating on one vertical, we are talking about all around development. And I, uh, on this occasion, I, all I can say is I wish all the best to my fellow Indians, and I believe we can make a difference in the world. Okay, Jehu, Jehu, Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS. We will be back with more stories right after this short break. back to weekend spectrum. The authorities in China and Japan are trying to diffuse tensions from rising as a result of sea dispute which both countries are claiming to be theirs. As we hear in this report, residents are not ruling out anything in the dispute. No sooner had Chinese activists arrived on this deserted island to plant their flag than they were arrested by Japanese officials. The island's part of an archipelago known by Japan as Senkaku. They control it, but China and Taiwan, who call it Diayu, also stake a claim to it. The island is rich in fish and potentially harbors hydrocarbons. It's now also at the heart of a diplomatic row. Japanese authorities arrested 14 Chinese activists, who are now being held in Okinawa for questioning. They just had time to deliver their message. Japan, get out of DIU. DIU is the territory of the Chinese people. The activists chose to stage their protest on the 15th of August, the same day Japan surrendered in 1945. China's criticized Japan's actions and is calling for the activists' immediate release. Meanwhile, Chinese demonstrators gathered in front of the Japanese embassy to voice their opinions on the matter. Why were Chinese people able to defeat the Japanese suckers after eight years of war? It's because Chinese people are not afraid of sacrificing our lives, because we never give up one piece of land. This spirit has helped us achieve the prosperity you are seeing today. We are proud of our country. On Tuesday, Japan said it was considering deporting the activists for landing without authorization. Well, the United States has urged the two nations to resolve the conflict peacefully, refusing to take sides. In 2010, relations between China and Japan sunk to a low after the arrest of a Chinese trawler captain accused of ramming two Japanese patrol vessels in the area. It's thought Japan now has plans to nationalize the islands, which are privately owned by a Japanese family. After being holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London since June 15th, Wikileaks founder Julius Assange has been granted political asylum. 
CNN's Christine Lewis South and Attica Sabab have been discussing the political ramifications of the rising controversy of a man who is facing extradition charges in Sweden.